Four pole versus 10 pole. Let's take a little deeper dive. So in a previous video that you can find floating at my head up here, we covered 10 pole versus four pole and I made some general statements, but I would like to talk a little bit deeper about it and clarify some things. Now in the comments, I did see that somebody brought up the point, hey, there's more than four pole and 10 pole, so why are you only talking about those? And yeah, sure, we can make a motor that's any amount of poles to tell you the truth, but in the rock crawling world, which is mostly what I do, everything's either four pole or 10 pole. Uh, our runners, of course, are 14 pole, usually, sometimes they're 10 pole, but let's talk about motors that you can actually buy. But otherwise, you know, we got two pole, we got four pole, we got six pole, technically we, there is eight pole, there's 10 pole, there's 12 pole, but nobody really makes that because of some optimizations that we don't need to talk about. There's 14 pole, 16, 18, anything that's divisible by two. But the theory that why higher pole counts make more torque is sound for comparing anything. And we can say two versus four, four versus six, or four versus eight, or any of that. And it will all work out the same. So what I'm gonna do, for simplicity reasons, I'm gonna show you the drawing of a four pole and a two pole next to each other. And what I've done is we can pretend that the circle of a motor, th this is gonna limit how much material we can put inside the motor, right? Of course, we can always make it longer, but at the end of the day, the circle that we are trapped inside of a motor is gonna essentially dictate everything about this motor. And we're gonna assume both of them are the exact same diameter, and we can actually present this linearly like this. So this would be like a linear motor, or if I'm gonna draw this in poles, let's have the top one be a two pole. So we have a north and a south right here. Just imagine that it's drawn equally. <laughs> and then we would have our slots of the stator on top. And for the moment, I'm gonna ignore that. Just for the moment, but we're gonna have to get into it. All right, and then on a four pole, we're gonna have a north and a south and a north and a south. Now, I am going to use this blue highlighter to illustrate a magnetic path. And the magnetic path is gonna be the width of the highlighter here, and that's why I wanna use it. And we can say this is a flux density of, uh, let's say like, 10 Tesla. It's really arbitrary, but we want to make sure that it's the same on either. So the flux path is going to connect the north and the south together through our stator itself and also through the back iron, but we're going to ignore some of that for today. But our stator, our, our working stator, stator, right there, stator, right there, it has to conduct this. So here we go. Here is one path. And technically, they're also going to be connecting on the other side since it's a round motor. You can imagine this wraps around. And so there'll be a woo, one over there that connects with the one over there. But let's just look in the middle here. So we have one, we have two, we have three. And that's about as many as I can fit without getting messy. Now, if we do it down here on this one, we have one, we have two. Oh, we can only fit one and two, but hey, we can go one and two over here. So we have fit three flux paths on this side, and then we have fit actually four flux paths on this side going from north to south. And what this is illustrating is that when you have more pole counts, you can actually split your flux in two, and that's what's happening. So for any given flux density, I mean, technically this has got more flux density than this. Let's just make it even. We've got four on here. Oh, it's gonna be a stretch to fit four. But trying to draw it nicely without overlapping any lines, you can see that four lines in one big rainbow is much taller than four lines split into two smaller rainbows. And in fact, this is what happens when you increase the pole count of a motor. You are shortening your flux path. So instead of having to go wee all the way around there, we're going whoop, just a little bit, and then whoop, just a little bit. Our magnets are essentially closer together when we talk about just one pole pair. But since we've doubled it, we split our magnetics between two. Now, what are the consequences of being able to shorten your flux path and jam in more magnets into a, a motor. So let's say going from two pole to a four pole as we're doing. So the amount of headroom that we need to conduct these four paths 
on the two pole is going to be this much distance, whatever it is. This is again an arbitrary drawing here, but in the four pole, it's only this much distance. And in fact, whenever you double your pole count, you actually reduce the back iron needs of your stator by half. And this is just how motors work. So as you can see, this line is bigger than this one. And again, this is kind of a, a messy drawing, but I'm just trying to illustrate the width of a flux path and an equal amount of flux paths on both these motors. So we don't need as much stator in this four pole now. What does that allow us to do? This allows us to actually give more and more room for the rotor side while still conducting the exact amount of flux, the exact amount of torque, and the ability to make the exact amount of power out of the same system. So if you don't have as much stator room being taken up, well, you can fill it with magnets, you can fill it with rotor, or you can even fill that with more copper in there. And either way, there are two ways to design a motor and it's either magnet based over here or copper based over there. You still have to have a minimum amount of stator conductivity to get your power through, to get your flux paths going, but you can make your motor powerful by either having a whole bunch of magnets in there and you don't need as much copper because your KV is going to be low, or you have a whole bunch of copper and you have a super low resistance and maybe your KB is not quite so low for it, but you have a whole bunch of copper. So it doesn't matter. You don't have those copper losses there. So this is where we start getting into the weeds of inherent motor designs. So let's go back to the 10 pole versus the four pole. If I have the two designs and I have not changed the shape of my stator or in another way to say it, I have not changed the size of my rotor. So here's a four pole that we have. And if we have a 10 pole, which is the same as our Crawlmaster right now, if it's using the same size of rotor, you don't get all of the benefits of going to a higher pole count. So your torque density might be a little bit better. Your low speed control will definitely be better with a 10 pole. But if you're not getting more rotor diameter, or if you're not getting more room for your copper inside the stator, then you don't gain everything. You only gain some of it. And this is where we get into the motor needs to be designed for what it needs to be designed to do, right? So for example, again, on our four poles and our 10 poles currently that we carry, we do actually have the same rotor diameter. And that is one reason why our four pole can really make a whole lot more power. And this is outside of the commutative losses, the switching losses that the 10 pole has. Just because we actually have a more effective packing of both our copper, both our stator, and both, I know that was three boths, <laughs> our magnets, the four pole actually has an advantage in this scenario because we didn't maximize our, our rotor space. Now, on the new 10 pole that I've designed, this is the rotor, and you can see much larger diameter on there, and I used math to optimize this. <laughs> so we're not losing the amount of magnet that we can shove in there. It is optimized on our back iron path. So if we use the same stator for the four pole and the 10 pole, we don't get optimized back iron path on the 10 pole because we don't need as much space. But since it's not quite optimized, what we get is better low speed control. We get better resolution on it. But as you get higher and higher in the loading, the 10 pole that is not optimized at least doesn't quite have that power and oomph that the four pole has. Now, when we go to the optimized ones, we will still be limited on power density due to heat shedding on the motor. And at higher RPMs, the 10 pole starts to get into switching losses. But when we have it optimized with this large rotor design, we have more room for our uh, magnets on the inside. We have an optimized back iron on the stator and there still is lots and lots of copper. So what you would end up with is a motor that is optimized for torque density versus the four pole that ends up being optimized for power density. So this is really kind of getting into the weeds, but I wanted to show you at least through a drawing why you can produce more torque with higher pole count motors. And typically, as you go higher and higher in pole count, your power levels will go down because of switching losses and efficiency losses you get from trying to spin the 10 pole or whatever it is just so freakingly fast. And hey, modern ESCs can actually keep up with it. Back in the day, 10 years ago, a 10 pole in runner, mm -mm, mm -mm, it wasn't gonna happen. You weren't gonna spin it past 35,000 RPMs. But these days, our, our motor speed controllers are probably spinning up to 75,000 RPM. Are they gonna like it? Eh, the motor's probably not gonna like it on a 10 pole, but that's a discussion for another day. And we can show that with the no load on those motors. So, uh, long answer that is really much longer than I even got into. But 
the basic answer of why higher pole count motors have a better torque density is because they are optimized to use less and less stator because they are more efficient at getting our flux paths in a smaller and smaller space. Every time you double that pole count, you end up having the amount of back iron that we need on that stator to conduct everything. And you know, this, this would be the amount of back iron that we need in that two pole there. And where is this? It's about, uh, well, and this is running out here. It's about half, that, that is about half. It's what it would be. So there you go. If you do have any more specific questions, I'll try to get to them, but I know that this is kind of a heavy handed uh, subject here. So there you go. If you have questions that you would like to see featured, leave them down below. We will read them, do our best to get to them. As always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.